nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you everyone for being here tonight. So it's a great night to have some discussion and some uh, quality time. Uh, tonight, before we get started, uh, we have our state representative with us tonight. And uh, I'm going to have, her, have a few comments before we get started with the other presentation of uh, USC. Okay, so at this time, Donna Lubinsky is... Thank you. Um, so I know last time I was here, it was awkward because I was standing at the mic and speaking here. So if you don't mind, I'll stand here. I know I'll be a little, a little bit rude. So I'm Donna Lisinski. I'm your state representative. I represent you up in Lansing, along with the communities of Whitmore Lake, Dexter, Chelsea, Manchester, and Saline, um, and all and for, the 14 townships in between there. Um, I was re-elected uh, a week ago today, and so I will be representing you for another two years in Lansing. So I just wanted to come today um, and offer the opportunity to give a quick legislative update. Um, right now, uh, we are on recess until next week, and then comes January, which is the start of budget season. I know some of the uh, items you have on your agenda today are related to some items that have been appropriated by the state and, and how to deal with those. Uh, one of the things that's going to be really important as we move forward, um, as you know, we have a new governor. Um, we retain a Republican House and a Republican Senate. There's going to be the ongoing discussions around roads and around road funding. Uh, there was a package that was put before voters that was rejected four years ago, and then a package that was passed by the House and the Senate that is now going to be kicking in next year. It's going to require another $650 million to be spent on road funding annually um, out of the state's general fund. The state's general uh, fund tax revenue, um, it was anticipated, will grow and be able to cover that obligation. It has not grown to that extent. And so over the next couple of years, we're going to be having to make some really big decisions about what we do with our general fund dollars. Um, general fund dollars are primarily spent on topping off our education funding, um, mental health services, human services, and transportation. And so since most township meetings that I go to, have about four or five people in attendance. I brought three times as many copies as I usually have to. So I have a whopping 15 copies of uh, uh, how to make your voice heard in civic engagement. I absolutely have a PDF of this and I'd be willing to send it to anybody who wants to. And you can always reach me anytime, either through Facebook. I'm the only Polish girl up there, so look for the ski at the end of the name. Um, so Donna Lisinski. Um, or reach out to my office and I can send it to you. But I'll put these on the back. Um, what's really important, and in all seriousness, four or five people is a big turnout in most townships. I know it's not here from having been here before, but it is in most. When there's something that concerns you around your schools, around your roads, um, my team's at the community meetings for Arbor Hills. We're, you know, we're, we're re reaching in and keeping up and trying to make our communities the best place so that they can. Water quality issues. I've got three communities right now that are battling um, their ability to have clean, safe drinking water um, in Whitmore Lake and Sayo Township um, and uh, the Huron River and the Dunite Eat Fish Advisories in Sylvan and Chelsea area. I don't know about them unless you tell me. And so this is the easiest way to get a hold of me and some ways uh, to contact me. If I hear from three people on an issue, I go, wow, something's bubbling. If I hear from six people, I know it is a big problem. Um, not a lot of people reach out, but you can really put the wheels of state government uh, in motion with really just taking a moment to either email, call, uh, or send a postcard. And I don't care which. Whichever one is the one you will do is the one that gets through to me. So thank you for your time today. We're going to have a lot of tough decisions coming up in the next year. And because we do have a government now that has a Democratic governor and a Republican Senate and a Republican majority House, it means that to get anything done, we have to get along with each other. We've been doing that really well in our local communities, um, and now we need, to, we need to make sure that that's happening at the state level, because we can't afford to just stop and do nothing here in Michigan. Our roads can't take it, our schools can't take it, our water infrastructure can't take it. So please let me know what you're thinking, and I'd love to hear from you anytime. Yeah, a question, please. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably aware Salem Township just re received a $10 million legislative grant. Mm -hmm. for, it was earmarked specifically for our urban services district. I've made some calls, but I haven't been able to find out what the legislator sponsored that grant. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us that? Who was responsible specifically for that yeah, grant? Are you all? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank you very much for your emails. Um, yes, we have done a ton of digging oh, on that. Wayne Wallace. Wayne Wallace. Excuse me. Yes. My mistake. Um, we have done a ton of digging on that. And what it's come up with is there was no legislator who sponsored that. It was done through the appropriations process. Um, and it was done in a way, quite frankly, and um, we've read it, um, to obfuscate who the amount of dollars were intended for by writing it in a specific way um, that those types of line items were done. There wasn't that I could find. Um, I'd ask a number of people, a, a legislative sponsor of that. Um, particularly in appropriations, uh, it's not like a bill. So when I, if I wanted to make it a law that um, a gentleman named Wally could only sit on the left side of a room, um, I would have to put my name to that. I would have to sponsor it, and I would gather co-sponsors for that. That is not how the appropriations process works. Um, the appropriations process is a is an omnibus budget that has a lot of things stirred into it, um, and there aren't names attached to specific line items in the budget. And quite frankly, I really appreciate this is exactly the example of what I was talking about. The emails into our office, um, the search that we went on for that is quite illuminating for me as a legislator to understand that there was not a specific legislative sponsor um, attached to that line item. Well, thank you for the information. Yep. <coughs> I won't always give you answers you like, but I'll give you the answer. <coughs> Robert Rizzo, uh, the question is the uh, diesel fuel tax and the gasoline tax. Those funds, are they going to a general fund or a special road No, they are dedicated 100% to the road funds. Mm -hmm. Straight through. And in fact, if anybody's really geeky, I'm really geeky about numbers, I have this beautiful free column graph that shows <coughs> taxes that come in and then exactly where they run to in budget line items and whether or not any portion of a tax goes to general fund or whether or not it goes directly to transportation, education, or others. And um, I'd be more than willing to share that with you because you shoot me an email in my office. Thank it's you. really colorful, it takes about five minutes to understand, but once you get it, you can see, and 100% of the gas tax goes to, is dedicated to transportation. Yeah. I know a SCOTA isn't any part of Salem Township, right? but I recently heard um, in the morning for deer hunters mm -hmm. about um, eating any of the deer within a five mile radius of a SCOTA because of a plain retardant that's showing up in their meat that came to them through the water. So, I so have, yeah, my absolutely. question is, are there other areas in Michigan and possibly ones close to us yeah. where this flame retardant is showing up in water? So I just left home where my <coughs> son is packing for opening day um, tomorrow. Um, yes, and for those of you who believe that it's appropriate to store your deer hunting clothes dirty so they don't lose that special scent. Um, uh, yes. So the answer is yes and yes. One, yes, there has been a warning put out about deer in Oscoda. Two, yes, it is near us. So the Huron River near us, the chemical, the firefighting chemical is called PFAS, P-F-A-S. It's actually a category of chemicals that we're using fire retardants, scotch guard, waterproofing, other items. There are currently our Huron River. It has a do not eat fish advisory and a do not touch foam <coughs> advisory. You know how a river foams up on the side? Um, and that is uh, because of these PFAS chemicals. So absolutely, yes. I had Representative Tim Wolber, um, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, the head of the Department of uh, the DNR, the DEQ, and Health and Human Services on the Huron River eight weeks ago, six or eight weeks ago. Um, my concern, I didn't ask about the deer immediately, I asked about ducks because duck hunting season was starting and do I have to warn my constituents in Chelsea and, and other places who go out in the morning and hunt up before they go to work. Um, their response at that time was that there haven't been enough studies on mammals or waterfowl to know if you shouldn't eat them. What's different about us, the Escota Gaylord area, is that because of the military bases there, they know that there was such uh, immense use of those chemicals there and deer stay with relatively uh, within an area. Waterfowl are more migratory, so there's less concern about the duck. For deer who live in a very specific area, there's higher concerns. I have not heard any concerns about mammals. They don't have any um, real data to tell us about mammals right in our immediate area right now. 
up for our fish uh, in the Huron River Baseline Portage Lake. Um, there are do not eat fish advisory um, right now for us. Yeah. I promised only two minutes, so I'd be more than willing, but yeah. Salem is also the headwaters to the Rouge. What do you know about the Rouge? The Rouge they're doing the testing on right now. So what they've done is they're testing all of the um, areas that have uh, water treatment centers. So where you have city of Ann Arbor water or you have city water, they're testing the water that comes into those and the water that goes out first. That's easiest. When you have areas that have a lot of private wells, that's a lot harder um, to pinpoint. But uh, they, they're working their way down. They've set a 12-month goal to get every water system tested. What they, what they know is the Huron River right now. They're testing, they're testing the bridge, the rouge. Yeah. Again, we don't always like, I, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat, but that's where we are with that right now. Um, I sponsored legislation now, it's almost exactly 365 days ago, to set a safe, safe drinking water standard for PFAS. We actually don't have a clean water standard for it yet. Um, and I was able in our Sio Township, where we had 85 parts per billion for dioxane pollution that was in the water, to lower that to 7.2. 600 chemicals have been under review for five years. It's the only one that was lowered um, and actually that had, had an impact take place. So this is high on my priority list. Um, I'm raising three sons. Uh, well, at this point, they're all bigger than me, but 17, 19, and 21. And uh, if I found out that I'd been feeding my, you know, opening up the tap, we've never drank anything but the water out of our tap, um, that I had poisoned my children as I was raising them. Um, you'd see a mama bear come out like nothing you've ever seen. So clean drinking water is top of my priority list. Uh, but I haven't even been able to get a hearing on that main committee to set a safe drinking water standard for PFAS yet. So thank you so much. Please reach out to me. Any questions all the time, I'll put these at the back. And I'm going to sit at the back and, and listen to this um, and see, see where it should have to say. Yep, there's, seriously, there's only 15, so I'm going to throw them in the back and do a first come, first serve. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you want to take photos of it? I put one at every row, and you can take a picture of it if you... Oh, yeah. Okay, thanks, Donna. Appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to find some more chairs in the back for we're trying to bring it in for those of you that are standing, so. Okay. All right, so again, we want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, so once a month, every second Tuesday, we always meet, so we hope to see you back here next month. Uh, my wife puts on this uh, display here with uh, freshmen every month, so there's always something new, and uh, so we have plenty of good refreshments and uh, uh, good time uh, had by all. So. So tonight, uh, we're going to uh, we have brought our consultants in, our engineers, also our planner, and also our attorney. Um, for those of you, um, after maybe we go through some brief comments that I would like to make as a township supervisor, of the USD, the beginning of it, um, back in uh, 1993, I think, I know some of you might have been here back then, um, the Planning Commission adopted what they had called the um, uh, the Growth Master Plan, which was part of the Gotterton Road M14 corridor um, that discussed about the area for development. Um, and then as it changed down the road back in uh, February 8th of 2005, the Township Board adopted the USD ordinance that was created as the Urban Services District, as we know it today. Um, a lot's happened. Uh, 2011, uh, uh, well, I became a supervisor in 2012, uh, and this board was elected. And a lot's happened uh, uh, since then. Uh, we've had, uh, back in 2011, if you remember, the past board passed uh, a section which is uh, this uh, section right in here, uh, north of M14, to uh, straight general commercial, uh, which was overturned by the voters of the townships uh, to not allow this to happen. Um, when we became uh, elected officials, one of our uh, uh, main uh, uh, 
decisions that had to be made as a township board was to rezone this property. Uh, again, the property was agricultural <coughs> residential, but in the master plan had uh, set it for uh, ROP, which is research office, uh, uh, office park. And uh, so uh, our advisors, our attorneys advised the board that this would be good on our part because of uh, uh, developers or whatever that um, we would give them more than what actually the zoning was before so we rezoned it to what the master plan says there's been a lot of talk and negotiations about different ideas with this piece of property a lot of the neighbors who live back in there uh, have actually uh, there was a time where um, there were some plans for some shopping and stuff in here and where the developer and the residents, not the township board, but the residents met here and uh, had shown some plans and, um, and most people were pretty, uh, uh, it was a pretty good plan. People thought, hey, if you put that in our backyard, they could live with it, but it was uh, just, just to get the feel of the waters to see how people would react to that. But as this point, nothing has been done on it. Um, they have, uh, uh, they haven't met with the Planning Commission, they haven't talked about any ideas with this piece of property other than what uh, they have shown a lot of the neighbors who lived there uh, back, I want to say, in 2012. Um, if, you also, if you also remember the first, uh, the, uh, and this is one thing I'll never forget as a township supervisor, uh, my uh, very, we were sworn in on November 20th, 2012. Uh, we had a little get together at Carl's Township Board and some family and people. And uh, our township attorney, Mr. F. Plato, came over to me and says, The first thing you have to do is write a check to the developer for a quarter of a million dollars and also allow them on uh, pieces of their property, which this right here, I believe it. This this piece here, which I believe is 60 acres. This is uh, North Ter uh, North Territorial Napier Road, and also along the Gobertson Corridor to allow them to use community wells, and that's what the courts rule. So uh, that was a favorable for our township, and uh, um, was uh, was just not a good good situation for our township but that it is what it is and we have to to move forward um, in 2013 I'm just trying to give you a brief idea since I've been the supervisor what's been going on project. 2013 Plymouth Township the developer had talked with Plymouth Township and had them come and uh, uh, talk to us would you be interested in providing uh, utilities over the border from Wayne County over to Washington to uh, service the USD with sewer and water. Uh, at the time, the supervisor, Richard Reum, was the supervisor there, and uh, we talked with him, and uh, uh, there were studies that uh, could have been done to see if there was capacity on the, uh, on, uh, on the Plymouth side to supply sewer and water to that area. Uh, in talking with them, we were, uh, I thought it, it if, if this was ever going to happen, that would have been a good thing for the township because it can really control what goes over there. There's a certain amount of capacity. That capacity could have serviced the USD for what they needed, and that's it. Because there was just so much capacity. How much capacity, uh, we don't know because the studies were never done. It kind of got political on that side. We just basically said, look, if, if there's capacity there and uh, um, they wanted to provide it to that area, we were willing to talk to them. So that happened, and then uh, things went downhill from there. Um, the, the real, you know, if this ever develops, I think the real one concern that we as town <coughs> residents have to worry about is whatever utilities come there, um, how, how are, are we as a township going to manage it? Um, and, and I just use this as a small scale. In our little hamlet here, some of you don't know, we have a little sewer uh, wastewater treatment plant. 
which has all kinds of issues. It's not really at 50% capacity, and we're already having issues with it, putting a lot of money into it. We're having to take uh, township dollars and fund this and keep it up. You know, it's, it's not really supporting itself. So uh, it's a concern. So I think the last thing we want for this development here, if it ever happens, is we don't want a wastewater treatment plant where we as a township have to be worried try to uh, make sure it's maintained properly. Um, so at that point in 2013, we had talked with, there was a lot of talk about development in Plymouth, Northville, and capacity from uh, uh, Yucca up in Ypsilanti, with the wastewater where it would go, is what kind of capacity, how could we, how could we reserve capacity for the USD if it ever developed develops and what would that price be so um, with all the meetings that we've had with them it was uh, $21,000 a year to reserve that capacity so that if it ever comes where we need that for this area to develop we have the capacity so that kind of started where it's a kind of a cheap insurance policy $21,000 a year to make sure that we have that capacity instead of having some wastewater treatment plant that we have to so um, in negotiations with the developer at the time, that, uh, as we had talked in a lot of our meetings, the developer agreed to pay that $21,000 uh, annually just as a reserve capacity. But again, we have to figure out how this is going to get built. And um, what we have said with uh, uh, letters and uh, signatures from the developers that at, at, uh, at their expense, it has to be put on their shoulders, not on the taxpayers of Salem Township. Um, we still now, between the sewer and water, they're still talking of a price tag of $30 million. Is what uh, this is, uh, has come up to be. That's the sewer and water together. So the utilities in Plymouth uh, release the capacity. Um, um, and then the other things that just to talk there are people who live that are here tonight uh, that live in the uh, USD um, one thing that I know this township board has promised is uh, we have been waiting for Yucca to develop in their ordinances where it discusses it talks about uh, a sewer ordinance to put into place in our township to have the board um, create the ordinance where the people who live in the USD will not be forced to hook up to the system if, it, if and whenever it comes. Um, so if you live in that area, it's it, it basically, it, it, the ordinance will say that uh, if you need to hook up to the system, the system is going to be there, um, but you will not be forced to hook up to it. If the county, as you know, if they come and inspect your field, they tell you that it, it's failed and uh, you have to hook up to the system then you have to hook up to it and um, but it will be available for you to hook up if you, if you sell your property you know some people want city water sewer and water don't want the well and septic they will be able to uh, hook up uh, in that area so that's has not been done yet but uh, the township attorney promised me that 61 pages so far. Yeah, that this is, will be done um, and put um, up to the vote for the township board um, to make sure that this gets passed. Um, the other uh, other issue is um, this district, as I've talked to the attorneys, is is a special can be a special assessment district. So. As new people come in to that district, if it's homes, businesses, or whatever, if this ever happens, um, it can be specified as a special assessment district to help pay for police, fire, whatever comes our way, so that it's not a burden on the rest of the residents of Salem Township. That's a real concern, and should be a concern for all of us, of not spending our resources on a development that's coming. It be those that are coming into it will be paying special assessment to cover these costs because we know they're going to businesses or whatever are going to want police fire and everything else and we need to have a resource to pay that um, 
How will the special assessments be applied to the current residents? Let me think, get through my thing and then I will we'll open up for a question. Thank you. And answer. Okay, so um, the other, um, we, we talked a little bit about the grant tonight, so we did receive this $10 million grant. We've had people say that Whitaker must have went up to Lansing and then some of his buddies up there. I know nobody in Lansing. This is not done, this was done by the developer. Uh, with contacts up there. So we did receive a $10 million grant towards that. Um, and as of right now, we have um, authorized our engineers. Uh, to, it's roughly, the estimate has come in about a million dollars to do the engineering uh, in the USD for both sewer and water. And we're gonna turn over the floor to them to give us an update where they are at at that point. One thing that, you know, again, I'm, I will tell you, I'm not the smartest guy on the block, but I, I, I really believe this township has some of the greatest uh, experts and consultants. We've got a team of people who work together really well and are putting it to, to make sure that we are protected, that we are um, doing the right thing, and that if the system is ever built, I mean, the township just, just to be blunt with you, you know, we, we never really had like a sewer ordinance. You know, we could have a developer come in and say, this is the way we're gonna build it, and we had no way of protecting ourselves. So our experts put together pretty quick when we heard some of the stuff was coming to put a, um, a, a, a sewer ordinance in of how this thing would be built if it ever comes so that we have an ordinance that the developer has to build. <coughs> so it's, there's just so many little things. The, the other is, if you look at one of the developments that are between Doggerson Road, I, I, yeah, it just left my brain how many acres is this? 300? What, what or Johnson that Controls is that? Oh, or Johnson Controls is that? Yeah. 367. Um, <coughs> that piece of property, if most of you have been here for a long time, it's been several different things. So it, it's been residential. At one time, I believe it was REI, if I, if I got that right. Um, it was research, um, uh, research uh, development, Johnson Controls, it was zoned different. This board uh, switched it back to, uh, now it's residential. So in our ordinance, uh, when you talk about a plan unit development, a PUD, which most of the times they come in, and you can, you know, you can look at the master plan, what it says, what it's zoned, and they can come in, fill out the application with a PUD, come to the planning commission with something that's really not related to that zoning. So you can come to the planning commission, and um, you know, the planning commission can go through the process of, you know, what they're presenting to the township. So. I, I guess when you look at the master plan, there's a lot of different things that the master plan can call for. And, but again, sometimes it can change. And, uh, be, you know, if they go through a PUD application form, which is allowed by our ordinance. So anyway, I think there's enough talking on my part, but uh, what I wanna do now is I'd like to turn it over to, um, our um, engineers right now to talk about the uh, sewer and water and basically how it's going, how it would run. Uh, again, we we are at what 85 percent, 90 percent. Plans, uh, yeah. With the plans that are, are done with that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think Brian, you have a, maybe a chart that you can show us how the route would would go with the sewer. And then yes. Lanny, is that on here? It's right underneath there. Kind of pinned in here. <laughs> Let him out. Let him out. Okay. And, uh, um, I can I can describe it. The, uh, so the block up at the top there is the urban services district. So that would be the uh, downside of that drawing over there. It's bounded by Napier on the east, Joy Road to the south, Territorial to the north and a uh, fictitious line just west of Godfordson for the west side. It's about 1,400 billable acres. And we plan to cover the uh, utilities for this. Um, as Gary said, we want to do public utilities, public sewer and water. Um, so we're going to run the sewer 
um, is the red line. It's going to run by force main, which is a pressurized sewer system. From the USD, it's going to have a pump station right at, at the Joy Road area. Um, and it's going to force the sewer down to the Yucca plant, the Ypsilanti Com Community Utility Authority. That'll be an 18-inch force main line. The water is going to be the blue line that run. It's going to tie into Great Lakes Water Authority um, public water, and it's right at the southeast quadrant of the USD, right adjoining Nape here. And we'll have a booster station there, and then we'll run a line across Joy Road and up Godfords in a ways to handle the first portion of the development that comes in, which right now appears to be Salem Springs down at the southeast cor corner of the USD. And uh, then that will be extended north as more development comes in. But uh, that's basically the, uh, the utility setup. And we've had several meetings with both Great Lakes Water Authority and Yucca. So um, everyone's on board with that. So the developers, you know, are pushing this as far as uh, development over by the Johnson Control property with housing, that development that has come in. Um, um, as far as the utility to be built out at 16, this, the capacity of uh, the water and sewer, the capacity fits just for the USD, which can't be tapped into outside the USD. So no, right, th this is sized so that, you know, we worry about the sprawl of growth. We, we love the way Salem Township is. We love the, the character that Salem has. And again, going back years, the USD was meant to develop. And what we want to see, at least as a resident myself living here, is we want to see if it does happen, we want something that's attractive and something that is a good thing for Salem and just not, you know, a bunch of strip malls or something that, uh, we, we just want to make sure, we would love to see something that's done right. And that's, that, that's the goal here. And, uh, but again, also by doing these utilities to making, you know, making sure that it can only service the USD. It can't be, it's a, there's a gravity fed and also a force main sewer. This is a force main, which is kind of almost impossible to tap into what the, what the experts are saying. Right, and I think it's going to be written in the contract that right. it can't be tapped right. into all. So Salem will own the line if it happens. And, um, uh, and, and again, please trust me, I, I, we decided as a board to do this tonight. It's not that something's coming tomorrow. It's just that, well, since 2012, all these things have happened, and I think it's good to send out a postcard to let people know what's going on. If you're not paying attention, uh, you, you know, these meetings are on our websites that you can watch them, and, and uh, when there's you know, planning commission and also our board meetings. So, you can be up to date of what's coming uh, or what's going on. So, uh, but that's the purpose of this meeting tonight, to just let you know where we are at right now and um, with the sewer and the water. Um, the other thing I want to bring up before I turn over to our planners is, the question is, is about the sewer going through Superior Township. So. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about, I can remember the first thing I heard from one of the ex-supervisors in Superior, Superior, Superior Township that this line will never go through uh, because they have a protected area where they don't want anybody to tap in and develop anything and it would never come through. Uh, before we even started this process, the question was asked to the Road Commission that uh, how does that work about getting permits going through the road right of ways through a town and they said uh, that you know we would give you the permits but if Superior wants to object to it they can and um, so a lot's changed in the last I would say a week or so though they're saying you have to get permission from Superior first and then bring it uh, to us and we will issue so you know, it's, it just, but since 2012 or whatever, they have told our consultants, uh, told the developers' consultants, that they would give the permits for the road right away going through Superior. But Superior can object to it, which I guess there's um, case law or whatever where 
you know, a, a community has a right to say if it comes through or not, but they have to give the, the, a good enough reason why they don't want it to come through. And uh, so that's the battle that's going on right now with that. But we want to be good to our neighbors. We, we're not forcing this on them or whatever, but we just want to do what's right. So what we're doing right now is we're moving forward with the engineering, and whenever the designs are done, we are going to ask the, the uh, uh, road commission for the road uh, right away for the permits, and if they deny it, then, then we have to see where we go from there. But that's, uh, so that's basically the utilities and what's going on. And then, uh, so now I have our consultants, uh, Carlisle Paul is our consultant that's here on Wednesday, so if you ever need to talk to him, he's here. And uh, so uh, right now the developer, the Showstat group, is in with their final site plan with um, uh, the units of uh, detached condos and homes. Um, they were, I believe they had brought their final site plans in maybe a month ago or whatever, but uh, they still had a lot of work to do and we sent them back to them. And now they've sent some new ones back and we're, that's just kind of where we're at right now. That's where we're at. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, really, that's all right. But if you just give us an update on kind of what's sure. going on there. Yep. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Paul Montagno, Township Planner, as uh, Supervisor Whitaker said. Um, and I'll just give you a quick synopsis. Uh, there is only one site plan in this U USD that, that we're looking at right now. It's the uh, Salem Springs Residential Development. Um, it consists of 554 uh, homes um, uh, that's on a uh, piece of land that's uh, roughly uh, 400 acres, six, uh, uh, 367 um, in section uh, 36, so it's that uh, very southeast corner of the Utility Service District. Um, it's at the corner of uh, Napier and Joy Road. Yes, right. So it's that whole yeah. whole block right there. Um, currently zoned in a residential PUD, so we're looking at uh, roughly 2.5 dwelling units per acre, which is consistent with the suburban uh, density called for there in the uh, rezoned PUD. Um, there are uh, a number of different size lots and different uh, housing types, so there are um, uh, 102 70-foot lots, uh, 146 90-foot lots, and 51 110-foot lots, uh, and then a, about 250 um, uh, condominium units. So uh, a, a different, a relatively uh, mixed range of, of housing units. Um, as, as the supervisor said, uh, they're in their final site plan process. This went through the rezoning process with the board. Um, they've been through a number of iterations. Uh, we as a consultants as well as the board and planning commission have really worked with them to get a quality development in this place. Uh, at this point they have submitted a final site plan um, and they're working through the details with us making sure that they have met all the requirements of both the zoning ordinance as well as all the outside agencies. So we're um, kind of working with them. Um, we've been through one iteration of plans. They've submitted another set of plans that we'll be looking at. and. Uh, at such time as they meet all of our requirements as well as get their outside agency approvals, we'll bring it back in front of the Planning Commission. Okay, that's kind of where we are in that show. Okay, so, so, um, okay, thanks Paul. And then, so, if I, Ed, if I could ask you, before this plan or the board had passed uh, for this residential development, can you go over, explain to the people of the development agreement that was signed with the developer in the township? Uh, well, originally, in order to, the property initially, because this board of rezoning was residential office park. And when a developer comes in and wants to do a planned urban development, then the township board has to pass an ordinance to allow a, it's called a PUD, planned urban development, planning and development ordinance, to allow the developer to make those changes. It's different from a regular zoning ordinance in that it, it, um, it has more flexibility and it has a time frame where they have to complete certain things or else it expires and then the property would revert back to the residential office park. So, um, Shostag did come in with a uh, planned unit development um, and we put that into a PUD ordinance 
but it's a little different than most PUD ordinances because this, this ordinance, because we're allowing them to go forward without uh, there being existing water and sewer utilities in the urban service district, we said, fine, we'll let you go ahead and submit your preliminary site plans and even your final site plans with the understanding that if, if uh, the township cannot come to terms with you on um, the financing and the you know, building and construction of the utilities, and if you, can't, if you can't come to terms with the township on an ultimate development agreement, then all the approvals we've granted up to this point will be null and void. And they've agreed to that, they've signed off on that, so every approval they've gotten, even though they've submitted preliminary site plans, now they're submitting final site plans, the approvals that they're getting are really conditional approvals because nothing is final until the financing is, is uh, set and in place for the water and sewer utilities and nothing is final until we have a development agreement that has to come back to this board and the township board has to approve it and agree to all the terms. And we're in the process of working through that development agreement right now. And some of the uh, and, and some of the ideas that they have sent back on financing has not been agreeable to the township, just so everybody knows. Um, um, we have told them that you know they have to figure out how to finance this, and it's not going to be. Uh, they they have come to the township and said, okay, uh, would you put up bonds to fund these utilities? They're wanting us to do that, and the answer is absolutely not. We are, are, are not uh, um, going to put the full faith and trust of the township. We've seen this happen before in many communities. So the Southern Township was one of them where um, you know, they, they needed the tax revenue. They, they, they encouraged this to happen, and then the economy failed. And then um, next thing you know, every taxpayer in Sylvan Township is getting a huge bill to pay for that infrastructure because they put the full faith and trust in it. Of the community. Um, so, um, this is something that they have to do. And again, like I said, it's uh, it's you know, it, it, it's a thirty million dollar price tag, and um, they have to figure out how to finance this. So, but to be honest with you, some of the drawbacks from it, from some of the past, you know, not to, to be negative about any of it, but you know, um, the courts allowed them to put community wells on the north side. And, and and again, that's that, that's not a good thing. We it, it, we need to have one system running the USD, these be you know public water and a sewer line going to to uh, to Ypsilanti. So anyway, so uh, anything else that I've forgotten that would be important to bring up? What's where we are at this stage? I'm, I'm impressed how much you've learned in the last six years. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's yeah. It, it, you know, again, this has got to get done right. If it's going to get done, and I'm not saying it's, you know, it's going to happen, but you know, we see all these plans coming in. They're spending a ton of money on this, but we certainly have to make sure this is done right. And and, and again, it, it it can be a, a gateway into Salem, something that would be attractive if it's going to happen. Again, I, I can't tell you it's going to happen because there could be many roadblocks that will come up. But I think as a township, we have to look at all avenues and see what is out there and not be quick to say no, because then what happens is when you say no to something, you get into a legal battle, and then the, then you get some judges that are making decisions for you, just like they're saying, you, you need to pay the developer, you're slowing it up, and therefore you owe them a quarter of a million dollars. They can put community wells, and then you just have a screwed up mess. And, and so we, we don't want that. So since this board has been here, we have not been in any litigation with them. We've just said we wanted to hear all avenues, put it in the box, and let's make sure that we do this right. But again, that's why our experts have you know, made them sign agreements, development agreements, that they're going to have to live up to. And, uh, and that's where we're at at this point. So I would like to just open it up and, and to the public and just, uh, you can ask the consultants uh, questions and try to be brief so that we can get everybody uh, included. Okay? Can you tell me what PUD is? 
Humidity wells are, from what I understand, that the engineers probably can explain more, but basically you're just uh, pumping the water from the ground into a tank and holding it and treating it. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot of, uh, so it's coming from the ground. And, and again, you know, I, to me it's like, I can remember when I bought my farm, I had it for a week and they called up and said, hey, we got no water over here. You know, and that, that's the last thing you want is to, you know, have people with, not saying that they would run out of water, but that, you know, your the township would have to be managing that more than if you were getting Detroit water or whatever. So. Let's play devil's advocate here. If I'm a scow stack and I'm 20 million short at the moment of paying for the utilities, surely my job would be to sponsor Superior Township to make it very difficult for your plans to be executed. And then I just go to court and say, it's, it's unrealistic, I've got to go and put the wells in and everything else in my own local sewerage work, so I can bring everything down to the 10 million budget that I can probably afford. Have we got a plan B? But if we can't get them down through Superior yes. Township. Well, just the only thing I want to make a comment at, the only thing that they uh, have a right to put community wells on are there two pieces pieces of property, I believe, that which would be this piece here, and then uh, the general commercial, at, I believe, on yeah. Diverson, on the east side. Right across from Carl's. Right across from Carl's. That, that, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. So uh, the only pieces where the judgment was awarded to them to do this was, um, is this piece here, this is in North Territorial, and um, Napier, so it's 60 acres, and you see the big sign up out there, yeah. which is another issue, I, I mean, I have, it's, it's just 240 sites on 60 acres. So, I mean, if you're in the real estate business, you're not gonna like me, but I think that's horrible. You don't wanna see 240 homes on 60 acres. So, I mean, you know, and talking with them, you know, they had said, uh, you know, maybe 40 to 60 upscale homes, that's more durable. You know, that I, again, there's nothing being, going on on this right now. It's just that this is zoned multi, uh, multi-family, I believe it is, which allows for apartments, which allows for, uh, yeah. Um, and, there's, and then also across this area over here that also, just so you know, that just shows that also bought this property. Magna owned it. This is like behind Carl's. Forget this 200 and some acres. This is also zone multi-family. So that worries me too. That's, this is but, if I, yeah. If I could help to answer the question. Yeah. Um, as far as community wells would go, it would not be advantageous for the developer to put those in. The reason <coughs> is when those uh, development agreements for those other properties were drafted, at that time to obtain water from Detroit Water and Sewer. Detroit Water and Sewer was wanting about $5 million up front to make improvements to their system to provide water. Um, we're now at a point where uh, Detroit Water and Sewer, which is now the Great Lakes Water Authority, has said we're, they're not requiring any upfront, any up, upfront money to be put into the system. And the developer can tap into water right at the corner of, of Jordan Road and Napier. Um, so it's, it's an easy source for water it's much easier and probably less costly than putting in a bunch of community wells um, throughout the urban service district. And the, uh, it's kind of the same is true for the sewer system. Uh, yes, on those other properties they could put a wastewater treatment plant, but the cost, uh, according to their own engineers, to put in a wastewater treatment plant to serve their properties in the urban, urban service district would be about $25 million just for the wastewater treatment plant where now they can get water and sewer both for the whole urban service district for like 23, what is that? About 30 million. About 30 million, okay. <coughs> but, but again, I think, and to Mark's point, um, you, know, they, you know, they could take a section, I mean, I, I don't know how the court's ruling is on this, but they could do community wells to get the development that they want to get started if they have sewer. Instead of, I mean, because it's going to cost them, what, 
just for the booster station, I think it was like three million dollars or something like that. But yeah. they have to have the booster station. They're gonna have even, to have that with even for the south well, properties. For yeah, but even if it was community well, they don't yeah, need a booster station. They, have community well, they, won't need they won't need a booster station. But they would for the for the residential. Correct. I, I'm just yeah. saying, you know, these are things that you know, they could just. You, you, uh, I wish that ruling never happened. <laughs> yes, Wayne. Yes. You mentioned earlier, uh, first let me say that there's approximately 50 uh, residential families that currently live in the uh, urban services district that have functioning wells and septic fields. And I appreciate the fact you said, uh, if I'm wrong, that you said that the, once the sewer becomes available, sewer and water becomes available, they will not be forced to connect to the public uh, water and sewer system. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. You also uh, went on to say <laughs> that if their sewage system failed, their on-site sewage system, their septic system failed, that they would be required to hook up at that time because they wouldn't be able to receive a permit from uh, Washtenaw County. Right. So what, what I meant to say, maybe I misspoke, but uh, we don't control what you can do with your septic. It's really the county. So if your septic fails, the county's going to come out and say, you either have to put an engineer field or, or whatever, or they might say, you need to hook up to, uh, if you have no other alternative. A lot of people have extra property for an extra field. They'll be able to continue that. I'm just saying if there's no solution to your piece of property and it, your septic fails, then um, you've got no alternative and the health department kind of takes over from there. They kind of, they, they kind of, you know, like you sell your house in Washington County now, it, they ha they come out for the well and the septic and permit it and you're, you're kind of, but. You're, you're partially correct on some of the things that you said and I don't mean to correct you on that, but I did a quite a bit of research I've been on corrected that. many times, go ahead. Uh, I no, can we're it. working together on yep. that. And I spoke with Mr. Dave Dean from the Environmental Health Department in this regard. And he said that uh, once it becomes available, this, uh, the sewer and water to uh, any property in, in Washington County, then they would not give us a permit to use a provisionary field. See, everybody in our township has a provisionary field. Everybody in Washington County has a provisionary septic field site. So if their field does fail, they have another site that they could build on. That was part of your permit process when you put in your original septic field. So what he told me was is that the township has an enormous amount of control in this regard. If you read the Washtenaw County on-site management treatment and disposal for uh, wastewater, it's clear. It says available sanitary sewer, municipally owned and operated uh, public sewer system whose use is made available by a municipality which operates and maintains a sewage system and is allowed by the local and is allowed that's the key word, and is allowed. There's two key words here, availability and allowed. So if it's allowed by the local unit of government in which the property is located. And then section 2.2 uh, says where a municipal wastewater uh, system for collection and disposal of wastewater is available, the utilization of such a uh, municipal wastewater system shall be required except as otherwise provided for in part 127 in the Michigan Health Code. In the Michigan Health Code, I guess is what everybody has to adhere to, a Washington County, and that's what Mr. Dean said, too. He said, connection to public sanitary sewer system is required when available, as defined by Act 360 APA of 1978C Appendix B. And when the local government agencies having jurisdiction will allow connection to that sewer. So Salem Township has a great deal of control on whether it's available or not available. It says it right here. In cases of the sanitary, oh, that's another segment. And there's another, two other uh, key points in here. This is in the Appendix B that I just referred to. It says available public sanitary sewer system means a public sanitary sewer system located in a right-of-way easement, highway street, or public way which crosses a joint or a bus of property and passing no more than 200 feet. There it is, at 200 feet. So what Mr. Dean said, if it's available, and if it's within 200 feet of any property in Salem Township, then they, if you guys could still have control and say that we could hook up or not hook up to it, but well, if we had a failure of our system, and we came in and applied for a permit, but in a provisionary field, and they knew that it was available, it came within that 200 feet, they would not give us a permit 
to build uh, an additional uh, septic field on our property. So should the design and construction of the infrastructure that comes into the urban services district, you have a great deal of control whether to bring it within 200 feet or not of the existing residence. That's the key number. And then section 12753 says structures in which sanitary sewer originates lying within the limits and city village of a township shall be connected to an available public sanitary sewer city village or township if required uh, by a city uh, village or township. So it's a little complicated, but the 200 feet the availability is a key term. So kind of in a nutshell, what he said is, he said Salem Township can say whether we hook up or not, but once it becomes available, they will not give us a permit to use that provision here in the field. Mm -hmm. And everybody here has the right to do that, just like everybody else in Salem Township. And a connection would be, what, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000? I mean, we haven't got a number on it to go that. So I personally would rather not be connected to public water and sewer. And I think most people move to Salem Township to get away from having to uh, connect to public utility. So if you could take that into consideration, and that's why it's important to get the input from the residents in here, whether they want public water and sewer. I did a little survey back about 10 or 15 years ago, the residents in that area, and not one of them wanted public water and sewer. They were content with their functioning well and septics at that time. My last question is based on what you said is, you said that the remainder of the township will not be subject to the special assessment district uh, of, in, the, in the USD. How about the current residents? And people have to realize there's established residential neighborhoods in the urban services district that have been there a lot of years. They really want to know part of the USD. They kind of just got swooped up in that whole system over there. And the reason for the urban services district is is so the remainder of the township can remain rural. So we were like sacrifice for everybody else in the township. So we appreciate that you can make these concessions for us and take this into consideration. Thank you very much. All right. And again, a lot of that will happen when we get into this. Check that out. Yes, sir. Uh, we keep saying public water and sewer. Uh, but these come from two different entities, if I understood correctly. And uh, uh, is it possible that uh, uh, residents could have the option of taking public water but not public sewer or even the other way around? I think we, they will have the option and they won't be forced to hook up to the sewer. Uh, yeah, immediately. Yeah, that's so, a good question. I'll write that, write so, that down. So you could maybe start out with public water and then public sewer a generation later or something like that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your question. Harvey. Yeah. Well, Harvey used to be a trustee of the township. His name's right on there. Harvey Berkeley. So, well, cool. thanks for being here. It was a lot easier then. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you know, I've been out here about 50 years, and uh, but I still have some friends in Plymouth Township. And they say, you know, I hear them say, and the politicians say, there's no way Salem Township is getting a drop of water from Plymouth Township. Is this Great Lakes water associated with Plymouth Township, and do they really have anything to yeah. say? Yeah, they or don't. They, they don't. They don't. They don't. Okay. Now, now, they could have, when we were talking with them, we could have tapped into their system. And, um, you know, that it, it, it could have been done that way. Uh, okay. But there is a line, a main line at uh, Ann Arbor Road and Napier mm -hmm. that's directly to Detroit. And, uh, so this would not involve this would not be involved. Oh, good, I can say something. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I have a question for the engineers: Have you decided that the where the sewers are going and how they're going to affect uh, accessibility to the existing residents? Well, the sewer to service the urban services district is the red line on the previous drawing we have there. And it's basically going to be collected into a pump station. So so there's a uh, pump station right in this location. This is the urban services district. There's a pump station right here, so everything will flow to the pump station, and then the pump station will run it by force main down Godfordson Road, 
uh, and work its way down to the Yucca Tie-In, which is about, what, you know, 11 miles? Yeah, 10 to 11 miles. And it'll be a pressurized 18-inch force main. So, but the, Carl, the, 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 the question about local source is right. Okay, I believe you're Yeah, Carl's on Napier Road. So, you're right on Napier Road. Yeah. 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 So, so, the per, so the ability would be, are you asking if you would be able to tie into it? No, I, I don't want to, but I believe that I should have the availability there that, and you know, it should be brought to my property line. And then if I want to someday, maybe I have to, then I can access it. And we've, that's been part of the site plan uh, comments because the development is right by your property. So, right so we talked about uh, that they've got to have a provisional line along so, the back side. My name is Dima Ogemel, I'm with Standek as well. Uh, basically those properties on Napier will be served through the back uh, into the Salem Springs property. So the sewer that is there will allow for stubs to uh, give those properties in the future uh, an option to connect. There will not be an actual sewer line going up Napier. There's a water main going up Napier at this point. But will that sewer line from Salem Springs have a direct line to my property? Yes, well, it won't have a direct line to your property. It will have a stub that would allow you to connect to from your property. Okay. So there will be a stub, uh, like a, a pipe, okay. uh, that, is a, so that is kind of dedicated to the properties that are along me. They will be prepared, so if you it do want to hook up. So in the you future, you can do right. I, I wondered if the sewer was going to be on the west side of those homes, if the latest or the last. If it is, then they've got to come between the houses, go over a berm, or go under the berm. <coughs> and that, if, if the, if the tie-in is out in front of those houses, that's $100,000 to go that 150, 200 feet. I'm talking about the proposed houses, and I believe that we're working with the yeah. developer to ensure what you, have, what yeah. you have requested. The, the, we've, we've been working with the developer to ensure what you've requested is available on the back side of those houses, so there's a stub oh, okay. that would be available to those right. three or four properties. Right. Thanks, Carl. Okay. My name is Jan Fernandino. Um, I have four quick questions. <coughs> the source of the water going through the Great Lakes Water Authority is the Detroit River. I believe that's where yeah, most of the water comes from. Yeah, yeah. So we're sacrificing 99% oxygen levels for the Detroit River, which we've spent over $800 million to clean up. Um, does the site plan of the developer include any conservation easements? Yes. 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 Yeah. And, and with respect to the community wells, is there any um, report as to how that well would impact the wells of neighboring properties? And what is the jurisdiction for that? I mean, how far out before it doesn't impact a property? Yeah. That's why we don't want <laughs> well, yeah. well the answer, maybe yeah. Gary, I may answer that question. At the time where, when uh, the developer proposed community wells on those properties, we asked for what is called an aquifer performance test that shows the sizing of the wells that they want to put in and how much water they need out of it. Uh, the reports that were submitted to us were not satisfactory to, uh, to prove that there is enough water in the aquifer, that's number one. Number two, they were not satisfactory also to prove that there will not be an impact on neighboring wells. So you would find correspondence between us and the developer saying, at this point, the study that was submitted was not considered uh, approval. Um, are Wayne and Washtenaw County prepared to add an additional lane for the, quote, 200, 2,000 additional car trips for the impact of 550 units? Yeah. 
infrastructure. Has that been discussed? <coughs> yeah, we, they've submitted a traffic study to the county as part of their uh, permit with the county. So it's going to be Wayne and Washington County yeah. residents who are going to pay for those roads. No, the developer is required to pay for the improvements that they have determined are required as part of the traffic. Events. And my last question is, is Superior Township's objection because of the significant amount of acreage that they have under conservation easement at Getty's Road and North? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what their concern yeah. is. Yeah. I think that's a fair concern. Yeah. So would they route the um, uh, yeah. subscri substructure in the roadway? In the yeah, so that's what you let me, yeah. Yeah, let me, we didn't really address that fully, Can so that's probably a good point to bring up. So the, the same the microphone so they can hear you. Can you hear me? Would you say what your name is, please? Yep. Yeah, it's Brian Simons. I'm with Stantec also, <laughs> the engineers, township engineers. So the, uh, <clears throat> The, the, the red line, which is a sewer line going all the way down to the Yucca tie-in that's going to go to the plant, um, is going to be a force main, like we talked about. It's going to be located in a public right-of-way, road right-of-way, so it's not going to, I mean, it's going to be in, in a public right-of-way for public utilities and ingress, egress. And it's going to be installed by um, a method that's called directional drilling. So it's not going to be open cut all the way down through there. It's going to be a, a setup maybe every thousand feet where they will directional drill the line in and there will be no surface disruption. There's going to be disruption at those at the at the sending pit and the receiving pit and they'll keep doing that all the way down, but it's going to be a pit every thousand feet and no open cut throughout the roadway. So. And my other comment is, in the future, um, when you come to a meeting that you expect to be of this size because, you know, the people in Salem are pretty vocal. Um, could you make sure that the graphics are large enough that we can actually see the red line and see the blue line? We certainly will. And yes. know what you're talking I, about? Yes. Okay? I didn't because know we were going to be so popular, but uh, yeah, we. Hey, uh, the postcards are <laughs> But it. I, I mean, and, and to that point, I, we'll, we'll leave this behind, and the township can have it here, and, and right, you can look I at it. Right, but I just spent, you know, an hour of my time, and I could have seen it while it was here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, sure. Thanks for coming. Okay. Yes. Why a pressure main instead of a gradient uh, sewer? It's too low. Is it cheaper? Yeah, it's too low. Well, it's actually more expensive. I, I, I can answer that. So um, when we when we looked at designing, I can't hear you. When we looked at designing the system, uh, there are multiple ways of uh, taking, to, uh, taking flow from point A to point B. Uh, one of them could be gravity, uh, and we looked at a gravity system, and the other one could be pumped, and we looked at a pumped system, which is what Brian explained to be the force main. Uh, both systems can be built, both, both systems come with a cost, but we kept, uh, we kept, uh, we shied away from the gravity system uh, for one main reason is that we wanted to be good neighbors and this is what uh, Supervisor Whitaker has told us. Uh, we tried to go with the force main so that we can directionally dr drill like Brian said. So do not disturb too much land outside the jurisdiction of the township. And with the force main, you're not, you won't have multiple manholes, you won't have multiple sewers that basically allow someone to connect in the future. Uh, uh, with gravity sewers, with force mains, it's just one line that is being pumped from a major pump station to the uh, wastewater treatment plant, and that does not allow for future connections. So uh, we took both <coughs> construction methodologies into consideration, and we went with the, gra with the force main over the gravity sewer to make sure that we're good neighbors and make sure that we are giving the least impact uh, design components into this project. Yeah, is there a time limit that the grant needs to be used by? Like 2021 is what they're saying. And from what I understand, it doesn't necessarily mean it's actually the end. I think it can be extended. I think we talked with them, but 2021 is. Hey, Bonnie. Hi. 
This is what, 300 and how many acres? Three, I keep, 367. So, that, you know, we don't know what the rest, no one's. Left over after the 367? This is just in that one corner, so. About 1,000 acres. Oh, 1,000 acres. So, so the uh, the plan for that area for the USD. Thank you. Yep. The the plan for the utility service uh, district area um, does not just include residential districts. It also calls for for business park areas, for commercial areas. Um, okay. And and, and some preservation area. So. Working out, so how much residential area is left after they after this one? I'd have to do some calculations, and I, I couldn't speculate right now. I mean, I think there are a couple different sections that are already zoned for multifamily, but we're looking to have those be single family. So it's kind of in flux. Why are they being so dense? Why? Well, I, yeah. 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 I mean, I thought that the rules that we had to. Uh, Right. Yeah. So, so this goes back to what uh, the supervisor was saying a moment ago um, with regard to the plan since I think it was 93 was to create this area where density could be placed, where uh, commercial areas could be placed in order to kind of preserve the, the balance of the township for those two acre and larger lots. That was the, the thinking when this was developed. 20, 20 some odd, 30 years ago. Yes, sir. Once the water and sewer infrastructure is in, what do you see as the next wave of development? Obviously, developers own uh, own property. Is it going to be the Gotherson strip there? Or are we going to start seeing strip mall? You know, what, what's the next phase once that infrastructure is developed? Yeah, I mean, a lot, you know, like I say, this, this area. This area right here, you know, north of M14 is general commercial, which, you know, rest, I mean, I, you, you just don't know. Nobody but is that what developers are, obviously once the water and sewer is there, right. then it becomes a very viable investment to right. develop those, right? Right. We really, we really don't know at this point what developers may want to put in there other than generally what it's zoned for currently, whether it's right. residential or commercial. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, back to one of my original questions, and sorry to belabor the issue, but what will be required of the residents that live in the Urban Services District in regard to the Special Assessment District? Will they be special assessed as well? Uh, that doesn't seem fair. I mean, again, uh, that should, shouldn't that be for right. the, the new way, development? The way I see it, and you know, once we, the way I see it is the new people who are coming in that would be in that special assessment district to pay for the police, fire, other stuff that needs to be in that area that's going to demand services. I mean, that, again, I, 
that's something where we'll have to have future meetings and talk about it. And uh, but I, I agree with you. I don't think that the resident should have to. And my should not be my probably my last question for tonight. I had a chance to read the uh, development agreement to, with the Salem Springs slash show staff, correct? Which one? Uh, Which one are you talking about? Agreement for There's the, like several. The Johnson Controls one, the one that was just revised January 10th, 2017. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's not a development agreement, that's the PD ordinance. That says extension of development agreement, Salem Springs LLC. I don't know what says right here. Then there's uh, a. <coughs> And it also says that uh, the one that you've given two extensions on so far, correct? Yes, that's the so, ordinance. The BV ordinance, yeah. Well, what it talks about, and this is kind of concerning, maybe you could consider this, because it's been not only the position of this administration, it's been in our master plan for many years prior to this administration taking office, that it'll never be the burden of the township to pay for the infrastructure coming into the urban services district. This will always be the burden of the developer through a special assessment or a special assessment district, correct? Do we agree on that? And you have a provision in here. It talks in this in this uh, development agreement talks about this responsibility to show staff to bring the utilities to our uh, uh, pay for the utilities coming into our community. But there's a there's a provision that you put in here that really doesn't make sense, and you may, maybe you want to reconsider this. It says something kind of contradictory. It says, such public utility service is not currently available to the township in the urban service district in which the property is situated. Considering that the township, here we go, considering that the township does not have sufficient funds to allocate in order to cover the costs and expenses of extending public water and sewer to the township to provide the needed service. Now this could imply that if we had the money that the township may want to pay for that. I think that's unnecessary wor wording that could possibly put the township at some sort of risk. Why would that wording be in in this development? Which, which section are you referring to? Wayne? This is uh, under utilities, uh, section 2. Then you take into consideration the fact that you're basically saying the township doesn't have the money to pay for it. I mean, why should that even be, uh, uh, why should we imply that, that it's a possibility? Then you take into consideration we just received a $10 million grant. The board, the township has approximately $10 million in the bank. You project our landfill revenue out over the next five or 10 years, we're not far from that $30 million. So you may want to, Reconsider that wording in here. It's unnecessary. Can I just have a second? Go ahead. The section that Mr. Wells is referring to is kind of a preamble. Uh, the, use the microphone, microphone, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The section that uh, Mr. Walls is referring to is actually a preamble uh, to the utility section, which basically all that's spelling out is that the developer recognizes that at this point there is no uh, water and sewer in the urban service district, but they still want to go ahead with development. And we're allowing them to do that conditional upon the water and sewer having uh, has to be put in uh, without cost to the township, and that the approvals are going to be getting, as I said, are conditional approvals. Well, yes. I, I agree with that. If that wording was specifically in there, but again, I read it again what it says. It says, considering that the township does not have sufficient funds, that could imply that if we had the funds, again, that that may be an option. Yeah. We, no, should never, no. we should never imply that. No it's not necessary. That's, that's just a preamble. No court's going to interpret it that way. Yeah, but it's, it's, not, that's not even implied that we have the funds. <laughs> it's unnecessary. It is necessary because it's a preamble to the conditions yeah. that we put on on the developer. I'd have to disagree with that. It hasn't been a position. Okay. Is there any other questions from other people? Yes. Yeah. Hey, just quickly, maybe I, I missed it or something, but it's 30, 30 million dollars is the price tag on the infrastructure, right? How, how much did they come up with? A nickel yet? Shots tag? Or is it just a 10 million grant? Well, some of their financial proposals to the township is basically put. Uh, uh, finish the sewer, which is what is the sewer now? It's up to 15 million, 15, 16 million. So they haven't put it up, but that's what they're saying. They're what did they have any letter of credit to show they're good for that? Or, yeah, but we don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. 
I mean, I mean, yeah. how, what's the next time they get an extension? I mean, this this PUD extension. Uh, in January. Yeah, I mean, I think they got to commit ten million or something. Yeah. Somehow. Sorry. Yes, Linda. At what point does the township create an expectation that this project moves forward when we continue to give approvals, and I realize they're conditional, without them having in place the financing to put in infrastructure? Why would we continue to do that? At what point do we simply say, no, you can't have a final approval? Because our master plan clearly says that it has to be concurrent with infrastructure. And to me, it seems something that this township should consider. <coughs> if they're coming before the Planning Commission in the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, that we don't give a provisional conditional approval yet again, that we say, no, the master plan is very clear. Get this figured out, and then we'll approve. And it seems to me that we are go going down a very slippery slope to continue to say yes, 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 mm -hmm. when we don't have infrastructure in place. Thank you. Okay. Good point. Oh. Just a quick one. Yeah, what uh, school system will and what post office will service that area? That'd be one of schools. Okay. And post office for today? Okay. Mm -hmm. DO box would be yes, Plymouth. Okay, anybody else? I really appreciate you well, folks last, being. Last question, I had my hand up here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't once, get... once the infrastructure does come to the boundary of the urban services district, uh, will it be who, who will develop it and design the layout into the, the the entire urban services district? Will that happen as development occurs and will be paid for as development occurs by other developers? Is that how that will that will happen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The look of it, you mean, like the finished look? No, no. Uh, the infrastructure. How it'll, how it'll, uh, it'll come through the entire urban services district to service all the properties in there to build out. Who will be responsible for paying for that once it comes to the boundary? Will it be the yeah. property owners that are requiring no. that service? No, it'll be the developer when they come in. That's what I mean, developer, yeah, developer. property owners at that time. Developers. And who will have control over the layout? That would be the township? Indiana. Yeah, I believe the township and the planners and, uh, yes. Well, shouldn't that be decided in advance due to our land use map so the township has control of that? We have a land use map. It really map depends what area. comes there, too. I think that, yeah, like, you, you can do a lot of planning and putting stuff into place and then it doesn't come. It just depends what comes to it. Hey, this has been great. I really appreciate uh, you folks being here. Do me a favor. I, I, I keep, I don't know if you read the newsletters or whatever, but I give you my cell number, which is my personal cell number. If you ever, if you're in the area, you hear about something or something's just not right, I would love to have a conversation with you and uh, to talk about it because it's, this is a great community. Now we, I mean, I, I, you know, I thank God every day that, you know, I live in Salem, and it's a great community. As uh, The more that we can work together and make sure that if something does happen over there that is done right, that it benefits all of us and uh, something that we can be proud of if it, if it does. I just want to see it done right because it, it because you can see where, you know, you, people get emotional about it, and I, agree, I understand it, but it, it, at the same time, you don't want other judges or courts telling us what's going to be in our backyard and that's the dangerous part that, that that's uh, what we don't want to see so uh, we're going to continue um, with our meeting tonight with the consent agenda there's nothing no voting other than consent agenda and other public comment if you want so if you feel the need to leave right now you're more welcome but, but uh, again my phone number is 248-909-3200 write it down and if you'd like to talk to me anytime, please give me a call, okay? Thank you so much.
We'll take a five minute recess and then we'll come back. Hey, your laser pointer would have been helpful there, too. I just want to start to get a scale that works with a leg mile sewer. It's all <laughs> All right, everybody, if uh, everybody could take a seat and we'll continue um, our board meeting and we'll come to order. I'm disagreeing with this need to be in there. Okay, we will just take it out. You said so. There's some purpose language in there. As I'm uh, looking down at uh, our agenda tonight, um, I didn't follow protocol, so I didn't even take a roll call or uh, approve the agenda. So hopefully I don't get in trouble. So uh, our roll call tonight, um, John Daniels out of town with work, and uh, so is Reggie DeLuca tonight. Um, and of course the approval of the agenda is um, before you. We already had the presentations. Um, if I could just uh, make a motion to accept the agenda as presented, can I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're down to general public comment. Okay, Jim. Thank you uh, for the notice and the email. Next time we have one of these, we did this black way when when, but we did it in the library or the, the gymnasium at the high school, the grade school down there. Sorry about that. Okay. So maybe something you want to keep in mind next time. Okay. You're in this crowd. Thanks, Jim. Bonnie. Yes, we limit the public comment to three minutes. Can we limit the presentations to twenty or a half an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but I, I really felt this was good tonight because um, it, it, you know, uh, like, I don't want to pick on Mr. Schaefer, but uh, Carl, you know, I stopped at his house, we had a nice conversation, and it's just important that that uh, we get all this information together, and, and uh, sometimes it's hard to communicate it, but I think this is, uh, 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 it, it just encourages me to see every. A lot of people out tonight. I think it should encourage us all. So, yes, Janet. Um, I have an observation about the comment that Salem needs an attractive gateway community. Twenty-three years ago, when I came here, I was treated as an outlander <laughs> because I preached conservation. I mean, um, and a lot of us moved here because we didn't want to have the density of other communities. We want to be able to see the stars at night. And that light from Ann Arbor, and the light from the east gets closer and closer and closer. So the big issue tonight is our community is changing. <coughs> Being in conservation, I know it's always a tolling situation. 
even <coughs> if something gets under a conservation easement and it stays open space for 25 years, to me, that's a defense victory. <coughs> Eventually, if somebody buys a piece of property and they look at this property now because all of us pioneers came out here and said this was a great place to live, they have a right to develop it. So we can't stand in their way and we try to make it as good as possible for the future. And that's what this is all about with this PUD. That's all. Thank you, Jen. If I can just make one comment about it, and maybe I'm the one who said about the gateway into Salem. Yes, you did. Um, again, what I mean by it uh, basically is that, you know, how many exits do you exit off of and see nothing but a hodgepodge mess? And and I, you know, I just, I, I don't think we want that as a community. I think we want to put our heads together and get something that's going to be attractive enough so we don't have a bunch of strip malls or uh, truck stop. I mean, they're, one of the, the pieces of property, you know the owner, it's designated for a truck stop. I don't think we want a truck stop there. So I think if we work with developers, people who own that property, and, and tell them what our vision is and what we want to see, um, I think we'll get there. I just, I don't know, but again, this, this could be years down the road. I mean, but again, I think it's important that we had this tonight to bring everybody up to date. Okay, so, Dan. Uh, being on the Planning Commission and also Land Preservation, I was on that commission, I really feel good about the Township and the Planning Commission and their efforts to really make sure that we do a first-class development over there, not only there, but along Godfordson Road. And Gary, you have spearheaded that along with the board. You pick the best consultants, the best engineers, and everything to help the township to achieve what we want to achieve. We know the builders, they, they try to force their way in and everything, but you guys have really done a yeoman's job, especially the language, to make sure that they're responsible for the infrastructure, water, and sewer, and all of those things. I just feel really good as a resident of this township that we have such good leadership. Thanks, Dan. Okay, anybody yeah, else? I yeah. wonder if there's a, is there an update on what's going on with Kalo with the wheel washers and all that stuff? Did the township formally yeah. write a letter to them or do yeah. anything yeah. officially? Is there a timetable or? So, I, oh, our, um, Paul and them already left, correct? Yeah. So, um, that'd be a question for them to answer. I know that they're reviewing as, you know, I don't know when they're coming to the planning commission, but they are. So I mean, are we mandating that they do that, or is it just no, a suggestion that no, we're going to say? No. Um, but again, I don't know what their final plan is. But when they come to the planning commission, it will be announced. And um, the wheel washer, the the um, Washington County Road Commission has been in touch with them. The DEQ has about the continue with the dirt and everything that's coming on the road, and they're going to address it. Um, so I, I believe that's the solution to it as far as eliminating by putting a wheel washer in there. So I know that they got three bids um, from three different companies and then now the issue is of the space that they need to put it in. But um, again, the, uh, the Washtenaw County Road Commission has sent out the Waymaster and they've been out there and told them that this has got to be addressed. And and I think we all agree, it's just, it's, it's got to get done. And we've had, and to give you, and as far as the road paving project, that I really believe in April that's going to get started. To have all them trucks go down Chubb Road to Five Mile out that corridor, that's going to happen. And that's going to really help with the issues that are continuing on Six Mile Road. The other question is, what's going on over here at Unlimited Services with all those paper bricks and all that? Is that going to be a business? I haven't heard anything about that. I mean, that I, business that keeps on growing, that's a house right there. I mean, she's allowed to have one person come from off property to work there as a home occupation. Is it, I mean, that place isn't is, someone living there? I'm just saying, or Sharon Bell's house there. I mean, there's stuff all over the yard. It's 
No, I'm saying the right house there, there isn't it a rental. I don't know what it is, but I mean, it looks like you're putting in paper bricks like a hodgepodge, almost <laughs> like it's going to be a display area for people to come in and say, hey, this is what we can do. So I'm just trying to yeah. figure out what's going on here. Did they get a permit to do that, or is that just something they're doing on their own? It, we, I know nothing about I see some, they're doing some brick papers, but I don't, there's nothing in the township. Well, but we can find out. Like I say, I mean, they got so much stuff sitting in that yard, none of that is permitted with our current ordinances to run a business like they are. She's not grandfathered into anything. I just wondered why we're not doing anything about it. You know, I, just, I don't understand why we ever got rid of our zoning administrator. I mean, this township needs a zoning administrator. And that's who takes care of stuff like that so it doesn't happen and gets out of, gets out of control. Uh, what? So is it a business over there? Unlimited services. You know, oh, you, you mean know, the, the landscape? It's been there forever. Yeah, it's growing and growing and growing. That's not permitted there. She's not grandfathered in. With that current our current zoning, that's not permitted there. That's not a permitted use. That big billboard is not a permitted use on Six Mile. Why doesn't the township I mean, do been, anything about that? I'm just telling you, it's been there for how many years? It doesn't matter. Uh, well, it does matter. I'm Two just saying. Two make just, it right. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just. Just because it's been there, it's growing I'm though. I'm not saying it's right. It started right. off forever. Okay. It was a All trailer right. and, a, and, a, and a truck. Now yeah. that she's got 20 or 30 employees over there. Yeah. Yeah, the township's employed her also for years doing the work here. So does that mean that makes that okay? No, I'm just... I'm, well, we need I'm a zoning administrator to take care of stuff like that because she, that's, that's an eyesore. That's not fair to anybody in the hamlet. Okay, thank you. Okay, you anybody else? Answer. Okay, thank you. But nothing ever gets done. Yeah. Joe? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about the landfill tonight. I just want to offer a, a, a thank you to Chief Jim and the, the uh, Salem Fire Department. They helped with a, a Boy Scout or Cub Scout den, and they had a very, very uh, spirited and meaningful visit with the fire department last week. I thought that was a fantastic gesture by the township to and Chief Jim to do that. Now you do it all the time, but they're going to remember that for a long, long time. So thank you. Thanks, Joe. Okay, any other public comment? Okay, uh, our consent agenda, Mr. Wenzel. I move that Salem Township approve the following consent agenda items. We have last month's meet minutes of October 9th of the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. We have the disbursements for October out of the general fund of 185702 and one cent. Checks 27879 through 27941. We have payroll of fifty-four thousand one thirty-seven and eighty-four cents, paycor of one ninety-seven and eighty-nine cents, checks out of the sewer fund of seventy-seven hundred sixty-two dollars and seventeen cents, checks twenty fifty-six through twenty fifty-eight, escrow fund disbursements twenty thousand three seventy-eight and fifty cents, checks seventeen eighty-nine through seventeen ninety-two, and um, checks that uh, disbursements out of the MEDC fund of $102,092.32, checks 20 through 22. So now invoices for the month of November, uh, general fund of $88,561.17, escrow fund $26,990, sewer fund $5,937.49, and uh, invoices for the month of November for the MEDC fund uh, for the sewer forty thousand six sixty three and seventy four cents and water uh, thirty thousand four twelve and fifty cents. So will we have a second on these items? I'll second. Mr. Connors uh, seconds it. Any other comments on the consent agenda? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, down to reports tonight. Fire Department, Chief Rockwell. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'll keep it uh, brief. Uh, we had 40 calls for the last month. We're off on the number of calls that we've had. Um, the weather's getting, uh, you know, turning to the winter time, and we're seeing an uptick in accident vehicle accidents and deer versus car accidents. So the deer are out running, and uh, the weather um, is making our roads a little bit hazardous. Uh, two other things I kind of need to report is that the county has updated the radio, so we've got new one, 800 megahertz radios. 
Um, and we uh, finally got our grant of the ballistic gear that hopefully we'll never have to use, but would be used in an active shooter case where we would go in with uh, the police support and, and treat the patients or victims that would be part of that. So that gives us eight, I believe seven or eight sets of um, bullet resistant gear with the tourniquets to render first aid should there be a need. God forbid that ever happens, but uh, county got a grant for a number of the departments we were part of. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other board discussions? Um, I should just make a quick comment about the elections. Okay. Um, you all know about the elections, but just a little bit of uh, uh, percentages uh, from Salem Township. So, if you were in Precinct One, sixty-five. Uh, we had a turnout of 65% of voters. If you voted out of Precinct 2, uh, we had 62% of voters turnout, and Precinct 3, 72% of voters in Precinct 3. So for a total, um, 67, approximately 67% voter turnout for um, Salem Township. In years past, for uh, midterms, uh, we last, that would have been 2014, we had less than 50% turnout. So it was quite a big turnout. So um, I guess that's good. And, and um, of course, uh, for just for your own knowledge, uh, in our township, uh, Shooty won and John James won and all the proposals got a yes. So surprisingly, uh, that's um, so all the proposals. Yeah. So it was very interesting, but um, those are some statistics. And thank you for all voting. We appreciate that. The marijuana passed. It passed. For a Republican township. A lot of you have been I can honestly say I've never tried it. So. <laughs> yeah, but now you're not spending tax hours yeah. to chase it. Yeah. Will it be available at future meetings? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it into the dessert. In our put brownies? Yeah. 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 That, that makes, uh, you know, just one quick comment. Yes. Um, you, Salem Township has the ability still to create an ordinance to not allow it in our township if we want to do that at some point in the future. We'll actually need to. Currently with the Medical Marijuana Facilities Act, um, the township had to opt in if they wanted to allow medical marijuana facilities. The way the new law is is written, uh, the township will have to pass an ordinance to opt out and prohibit them here. But that's what the township <coughs> wants. But why would you do that if people voted yes? That'll be a good, a good discussion then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. send out a postcard. <laughs> Now, Ed, if I'm correct, it's just the sale, like more food storefronts, correct? I think, yeah, it, well, if any, whether you want growers, you know, sales or whatever, yeah, you have to, you have, we'd have to have an ordinance for you. So. Okay. Well, that means I can't grow cash crop marijuana then. I mean, uh, well, you could, just don't go against it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, other comments? Uh, we need to thank uh, Mr. Converse for getting this project on our doors. You know, now you don't have to open the door, you can open automatically. I mean, them doors, they were in such bad shape, uh, they hardly even closed and gives you more sunlight through the office and also the township hall, but uh, it's a project that really needs to be done. And have to give him a lot of credit for uh, falling through that and getting it done. So thank you, Mr. Converse. So that's finally done. Okay, so uh, we're down to uh, public comment again. <laughs> yeah, a lot of public comment. All right, folks, say thank you very much for being here. Um, and uh, it's a long meeting tonight, but uh, usually they're not. So if you've never been here before, they usually last an hour or less. So thank you. We're adjourned. And happy Thanksgiving.